All right, Kyle. Uh, so there's like, you know, dozens of Christmas movies and we are now into the Christmas season. There are a few Thanksgiving movies. Any top Thanksgiving movies that you watch on a yearly basis? Can you think any off the top of your head? Spider-Man? Is that a Thanksgiving movie? Yeah, because Green Goblin, they're eating over the Thanksgiving dinner. Well, it's a scene in a in a but I'm talking, you know, the the full spectrum of Thanksgiving. I'll play the intro clip and give you some time to Google that. Hmm. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, with the Black Friday edition of Locked On Avalanche. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. It is Friday. Kyle Sullivan is joining me. <clears throat> he is Googling at the moment. Uh, if, you, if you're not watching on YouTube, I threw him a question that he is, he is looking up right now. So we'll get to that answer and I'll ask it again for the people listening on, uh, you know, podcast radio land. Uh, but first things first, follow the show on social media outlets, L O P and underscore avalanche on Twitter, locked on avalanche on Instagram questions, comments, concerns, opinions, go to locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow the show's YouTube channel over on YouTube. Today, we'll be discussing the Avalanche victory over the Anaheim Ducks on Wednesday night. Uh, We will get into some Black Friday specials. And what we mean by that is things that maybe have surprised you so far by the Avalanche this season. Things you were not expecting. A Black Friday deal, so to speak. So we'll be talking about that and... We talked about him last week when he got his extension, and this week we have to talk about him now as the winningest coach in Avalanche history. Once again, we'll be discussing Coach Jared Bednar. So, like I said, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom is here. It's a Friday. I threw him the question in the opening on on YouTube. If you're watching on there, you know that there's dozens of Christmas movies out there, obviously. Everybody has their own. Everybody has their own top five. There are some Thanksgiving-themed movies that I know there's there's one that sticks out in my head that we watch every single year any I have a feeling that after you looked it up I know where you're gonna go but uh go ahead and then I'll throw you mine now but when I started googling I we were watching today yeah is it planes trains and automobiles that well that's the one that everybody will will go to and even people who don't really kind of like associate it as a thanksgiving movie when they look up thanksgiving movies like oh yeah that is and that's the one that always like everybody throws out there we were watching that one today um let's see so there's one there's one that that we watch all the time uncle buck no no what do you that is a good one dutch Ooh, dutch with with ed o'neill yeah, pick up his stepson. That movie is fantastic, man. That that and that was Ed O'Neill during like the Married with Children era when that like yep. that's all anybody knew him as was was Ted Bundy. And then like you saw it, like wow, this guy's got some acting chops. Like it's yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Um, awesome movie. Awesome yep. Movie. So yeah, Plane, Trains, and Automobiles as a family watch like on Thanksgiving before everybody gets there. Like the early birds, we usually yeah. sit down and just like quote that movie. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, it's a, it's a classic. So there are some good Thanksgiving movies out there. Go yep. go search for them. I mean, now that we're past Thanksgiving and we're getting into the Christmas season, obviously we'll get to Christmas movies later on because we could do an entire episode about those. <laughs> uh, but that's down the road. But for today, um, hope everybody had a good, healthy, tasty Thanksgiving. Um, and now we're on to back into avalanche mode. A lot of games coming up for the Avs in December. We'll get to the December schedule next week sometime. Um, But first, we got to talk about this streak that has continued. Now up to six games. They have beaten the Anaheim Ducks. I thought this was going to be kind of like a grind out, lower scoring game. Thought maybe like a two to one, three to two. They'd really have to like eke this out at the end. 
Um, it was still a grinder of a game because that's the game that Anaheim made them play. But it can we say like right now, like this Avalanche team is just is is too good for a team even like Anaheim who's playing well, but they can't compete with when the Avalanche are clicking. It's tough for anybody to hang with them. Yeah, I think it's a, a positive you could point to with the Avalanche right now. Um, not only are they on a six game winning streak. This is a six-game winning streak against physical teams. Um, like, you can look at last year and the year before um, when the Avalanche were on a run. That's usually when it got derailed was those physical teams, and they would end up beating them 3-2 or, like, 4-1. Those physical teams just get in the way. Vancouver played as physical, and Anaheim always plays as physical. And yeah. you could see that in the fights and the penalties. Um, even though the power play wasn't as productive, like, it was a physical game, and the Avalanche still walked away looking like the better team. So that's a extremely positive thing going forward because this is what the playoffs look like. That physical, never give up, you have to fight for every goal you get. So if we can make it through this little bit of adversity, I think yeah. we got a good thing going. Yeah, I, it took them a little while to get going in this game. Anaheim was playing very well in, in the first 10 minutes of the game. Even took a one nothing lead, uh, but you could the Avalanche were, were sh- I want to say like it's not like they were struggling to get shots on net, but they had to work for every mm-hmm. shot they got on net. And as the period went on, you started to see them kind of like tilting the ice a little bit more. Um, and then Kale McCarr got that one with a, a minute or so, less than a minute left. And, and you felt like, okay, if they can keep that up, carry that over into the second, uh, you know, you're feeling pretty good. And they did. Uh, Alex Newhook got one early on. And then Abu Kubel got one uh, later on. Two for him in an ab sweater. So a solid uh, waiver wire pickup by Joe Sackick so far. That line is, is an exciting line. You know, with with the and I put a tweet out. We have to we have to give them a nickname. It's a the 16, ascending line. Game. The <laughs> yeah, ascending something. line. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they're they're good. They're good. Yeah. They, they haven't been playing together for for that long. Um, because you got Newhook, who's young, and Abu Kubel, who's only been there for a little while. But they seem to be clicking. They're in a, they're mm-hmm. a fun line to watch right now. Um, but yeah, the Abs. You could tell started to figure it out. Uh, started to, to to figure out the way that Anaheim is going to play them, which is a tight game, clog up the neutral zone. And the Avs just changed a few things, got the, the pucks in deep, beat them to the corners, beat them to the boards, and then just worked their magic and worked their skill. Um, and, and it was good to see. It was, it, was, it was a good overall game, I thought. Matching that physicality and handling adversity, not when a team is trying to – out physically if that's even a word but this is the yeah. second time that we've had to swap kimber and jojo in net and usually usually wow. when the avalanche go down a goalie they kind of have to shift because they don't trust the goalie if you remember like when grubauer goes down and they had to swap out frankie or vice versa frankie for it could have been hutchinson or whoever the mm-hmm. defense always retreats and they start playing differently like overcompensating for a fresh goalie and the avalanche just are starting to really just believe in what they're doing. And they're continuing that push no matter who's back behind them. And that's another positive thing you can have going forward. Well, and you know, the reason Kemper came out again is just the flukiest of things, you know, his skates just seem to be failing. I mean, I know it's like a freakish thing. He's hitting, the 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 uh, uprights just right where they're pushing his skate out the, the blade out it, it's yeah. bizarre um and i think like after the second time it happened in this game which is the third time it happened overall in the past two games i think after the the second time in the game that he got him fixed i i really want to know what that conversation i haven't watched the bednar post game po- conference yet i don't know if he addressed it on why he didn't put him back in after the second time he was just like, we don't want to send you back out there just, yeah. just for 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 safety reasons or if it's going to happen again. Let's just keep you on the side, get you a new pair of skates, and then every, 
it's just a bizarre. I've never seen anything like this before, ever with skates. And you know, it's goalies are weird. And if this is his second time with a skate coming off, it you almost kind of have to treat it like tweaking an injury. Like when you're in that <laughs> crease, like you wonder if that had something to do with uh, JoJo finishing it out. Like Kemper is going to go in there and play like, okay, this skate's giving me problems. That's going to be in the back of his mind. If I make this move one more time, am I going to lose the skate? Yeah. And he's going to start, and he's gonna start yeah. playing a little bit like a little like, should I be in this position? And then start overthinking his position. So Bednar is just like, let's just address this. We got some time. We're going to get you some new skates, son. Don't you worry. <laughs> and then just I let mean, JoJo finish it up. Yeah. And, and he was playing. I mean, it was he was playing okay. He did give up a goal and it was solely because of the skates. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to, you don't want to chance that again. You know, yeah. the game is kind of close. You don't want to chance him losing a skate at the worst time, which has already happened once in the game and giving up another goal. So why chance it? Put, put Johansson in. If he's playing well, all is well. And he did. And he played well. And then, you know, I, seeing Curtis Curtis McDermott be in the starting lineup, I was just like, why? Um, I didn't hear anything about Sherwood being injured. Um, and I don't I, – I, my my history with Curtis McDermott goes back to when the Avalanche acquired him. So I didn't know he had this long uh, fighting history uh, with Delorier, but apparently, like, these two are, you know, Rocky Balboa and, uh, you know <laughs> – Hulk Apollo Hogan Creed or, or, or Apollo Creed or you know the Russian whoever you want to say um, uh, Igor Dragoff or something Dragoff yeah I, and and this is apparently round four for them in the past two years um I, number one I I want to believe that's not the only reason that they put him in you're if you're going to put him in the game then you know that these two are going to go at it because they have been for the past you know a few times that they played each other but I, I kind of want to think it was more than that. And, you know, there has to be some protection there because, you know, Deloria is a, a hovers on the goon side of the, like he will yeah. fight anybody. And if he's going to go after one of the Avs hottest players in, in Nazem Kadri, who people don't like anyway, who's really there to back it up? You know, if, if it's, if it's gotta be Kadri himself to defend himself, that's not good because if something goes wrong, we got a suspension on our hands. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's twofold. They put him in there because they knew they were going to go at it and I guess keep that tradition going now. I mean, we're in the, tra- you know, it's Thanksgiving, so let's keep traditions alive um, and for some protection. Um, but yeah. is it necessary? I mean, is, is this getting kind of is this getting like like with with uh, St. Louis constantly going after Kadri? You made your point. Yeah. You're not happy with what he did. I get it. Now you fought him more than enough times. Let's end it. Any thoughts on on these two duking it out over and over again? Well, you know going in that Anaheim resorts to that super physical play, and uh, Kadri's got a target on his back. So you have to have somebody to enforce the enforcer, and that's just – I mean, he didn't chalk up a lot of minutes that night. That was basically his role was to it? set the tone. Yeah, set the was tone it? early. <laughs> And you could see uh, that even like kadri has got that mindset that, that he's he's got, he's got a reputation. Like when things are getting physical and things are getting punchy, he's kind of leaned back. He's kind of out of sh- out of the frame, out of the shot, because he knows and everybody knows. And I think that's going to be the new point of contention. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised next time we roll around and play St. Louis that you see McDermott out there again. Like I said, you got you got to keep the the tradition alive at this point. Yep. Uh, but we'll see what happens. All right. Um, <clears throat> there's more to get to in this game, and we will touch on some of it, I guess, in, in, in the next segment when we talk about uh, our Black Friday deals. What, what, is, what is surprising to you uh, from the Avalanche players, stats, anything uh, that you were not expecting? A sweet Black Friday deal that just comes out of nowhere that you wake up at 1 in the morning to go stand in line for. Let's talk about those. But first, we're going to hear from Stat Hero. And you you do your fantasy sports, do you not, Mr. Kyle yeah. Sullivan? Yes, I do. Oh, and nobody plays daily fantasy sports to lose, and winning feels so much better. But traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against. Stat Hero is the first of its kind 
for daily fantasy sports. It's a platform where it is you versus the house in a head-to-head fantasy matchup, and it's winner take all. And here is the crazy part. Stat Hero shows you their lineup before you play, and you handpick the team you want to face one-on-one. This never-before-seen innovation of fantasy sports and, and sports betting hybrid has Stat Hero players clocking odds that are over four times better. Why? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns, and Stat Hero puts you in control of your fate. So sign up for free right now at StatHero.com slash hockey and use the promo code hockey for a 100% deposit match. That is StatHero.com slash hockey and use the promo code hockey for 100% a 100% deposit match. Once again, stothero.com slash hockey. Promo code is hockey and terms and conditions do apply. All right. So uh, maybe some people are listening to this episode while they are standing in line for the a Black Friday deal that they've been waiting all year to get. <clears throat> so why not discuss some uh, special deals that we have seen so far from the the Colorado Avalanche and I know there's some that jump out right away and I'm going to let you take the the lead on this one because it's one of your I'm guessing you want to start with one of your favorite Avalanche players and we alluded to him towards the end of the first segment but go ahead ah, for all the Nazem Kadri haters I understand I understand he's got a reputation But look at the production this man has put out this year. He's having the best year of his life. I mean, 25 points to this point. I mean, you, you, and on a streak. And he's doing it the right way and unselfishly. And the team starting to play around that hot hand. You saw that little deflection goal that that was. That was just like I, I know I'm on fire. I'm just gonna stick my stick out here. I know it's exactly where it's, I know exactly where it's gonna redirect. Right. It's some that was pretty. It's, a, it's amazing what that confidence does, not just for like Nas, but the whole team because they believe in him. Yeah. And they could feed him that puck and know this is going to the right spot. So uh, this does make me happy. But at the beginning of the year, we were wondering if he's even going to make the team. Is this a gamble the Avalanche want to make? And mm-hmm. once again, Sackett looks like he knows what he's doing. Um, Kadri is absolutely on fire, and the league's starting to take notice. And it yeah, makes that it makes that trade look even worse because, like, look at where Tyson Berry is right now. Yeah, yeah. and and it's just and Alex Kerfoot's not doing much of anything i mean i think he's still in toronto i don't think they got rid of him but um yeah i mean kadri his highest points 61 points in the 16 17 season i mean he's on record or he's on a pace to absolutely shatter that i don't think any of us expect him to continue with this pace this this is a pace that not many people can continue but if nothing else you always look for the guy who steps up when your superstar is out and, and, you know, Kadri has checked that box. So, mm-hmm. and McKinnon still might be out for a little while. I think they're planning on him um, traveling with the team starting December 1st when they go on a five game road trip. That doesn't mean he's going to play that first game, which is against Montreal, not Montreal, Tor- Toronto. Um, so he's going to be out for a little while longer. So yeah, for him to continue this pace, not only benefits him, but it obviously benefits the team. So no, nobody thought he was going to, you know, start. This is, this is a start that you would think someone like Miko Rantanen would have. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I think he was itching to get this season started after how his season last year started or ended. Um, and to, to disprove a lot of people and to show people like, no, that's not, I don't want to be known as that, even though I will be, <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, but uh, you know, I can I can score in this league and I can be a leader on this team, and that's exactly what he's doing. So I'm definitely with you on, on him. Um, I think you have to mention Logan O'Connor. You know, he he is a a pleasant surprise. I, I think from Avalanche fans, like I don't want to say he's a surprise, but I would say it's a surprise that you know it's November 
And with the injuries the Avalanche have had, he's taken over a first line role. I think yeah. that is the surprise. We we knew his speed, we knew his like toughness and grit and and, and his and the capability that he had. Uh, but to ascend from a a you know no brainer fourth liner to the team being comfortable and even like the fans being comfortable with him being on a top line. That's in a sense that you love to see in hockey. You love to see stories like this of a guy who you you know just needs to be given that chance, and he's done everything with it. He he's one of the most exciting players that that we have, Nathan McKinnon included. Yeah, and he's, I mean, you could see it on the ice. And when you had Connor on, he was one of the players that he mentioned by name. Like, yeah, that's somebody that stands out when you see him on the ice, and. It's one of those also that subscribes to the confidence and they believe in him and he believes in where the team's going and all that hard work has rewarded him a deserved top line spot. And he's incredible out there. He's, he is fitting in so well with what the avalanche are doing. Um, He is a definite black Friday deal in every sense of the word. And look what he's doing. It's almost like when the abs take a, a, a penalty, you're like, okay, now, uh, is he going to score? Is yeah. he going to get a short? Is he going to get like he gets so many opportunities, uh, shorthanded because he's just good at anticipating where the puck is going. He puts himself in a good position. He's good at reading his teammates when they have the puck and where to be to for them to set him up with a good pass so he can get a full head of steam. He's a smart, smart, heady player. And uh, yeah, he, he does it all. He does yeah. it all, so uh, you're, you're really happy for him. You got another one? I do. It's, it's a it's a name we all know. It's surprising. You have you don't think about it in this context, but we were talking in the first segment about the the chemistry and the streak that we're on. And if you look at our plus minus right now, there's a there's a tie for the best plus minus on the team. Gabe Landeskog is one. Mm-hmm. The other is Devin Tate's. Yeah, man. He's and, the unsung and... hero on this team. Like you want to talk about what's changed with the uh, the attitude and the confidence and the chemistry of the Avalanche. He's quietly come back, and he has like he's got a plus eleven right now, tied with Gabe. But his confidence, his leadership, the way he quarterbacks the defense, uh, it, it doesn't he... always show up on the score sheet. But it's that stat that we always talk about that is so vital to the success of the avalanche. Devin Tays brings that in spades. He is so comfortable with the puck. Like you said, like he quarterbacks like the second unit, but even when he's out there in five on fives, um, which is usually with McCarr, um, he, he just is not, he's not a guy that just makes mistakes left and right. Like he's, he's smart with his passes, I was watching. It it was almost like Anaheim, when he had the puck, was backing off of him a little bit. Not because he's this offensive dynamo. And it's just because he will know how to get past you. And if you pressure him, he's got great vision. He is a good passer. Like he you can you can he can do a lot of damage to you if you want to challenge him. And I was watching and I saw it over and over again where Anaheim players were when he had the puck. They they were they were just keeping their dis they were having good gap control but not getting too close to him because they were afraid of what he can do. It was amazing to I'm telling you if you rewatch that game, it stuck out to me. And it's one of those the Avalanche are so like the way you approach them defensively is you play the player. Like yeah. if you're trying to shut down Nate or Miko or Gabe or even Nas, you play the player, make them uncomfortable. But the way Devin Tays plays, you play the play, and. You're you know that if you try and overplay or underplay Devin, he's going to make you hurt. So you're trying to dirty up the play he's about to make because he's so unselfish and he knows where everybody is at all times and he makes those crisp passes that Anaheim was having to resort to. Maybe we can get in the way of this pass because if we try and bite on this play, he's going to make us pay and then we're going to go down even more than we are. Yeah, man, he's. Another amazing move by by Joe Sackick, and we are lucky to have him. Yeah. Uh, one more I'll throw out, and again, this is kind of like where you say a, a name 
that, you know, it's, it's, he's, he's a household name. He's right under, you know, Nathan McKinnon. Uh, and it's not Kale McCarr, the player. It's Kale McCarr, the leading goal scorer on the, the Colorado Avalanche. That is something that I don't think many of anybody really expect. We know he's got offensive capabilities. Let's, you know, not kid ourselves. Um, but he, you know, and Nazem Kadri deserves all the accolades he's getting right now. Kale McCarr, it, he, you know, he, his preseason and his, you know, early season woes are over and done with. Yep. And if he continues at this pace, which I, you know, he could, he can continue how he's playing this right now. There, there is, I just feel there's good defenders in this league. And I think when it's all said and done at the end of this year, he is going to be head and shoulders above everybody else. And that Norris trophy is going to be unanimous in him winning it. He is insanely good. I know we talk about, about him a lot, but when you have a player of this caliber that is just on fire and now a, a, a defender who is taking shots, like he has the amazing ability to know exactly when to shoot the puck so it's going to get right on net. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I think it was two games ago um, when you really saw Kale like step to that next level and gain that confidence. It was that off the face off, like in Ovechkin's office slap shot he took, not even paying attention to where like the puck really was. It was he was looking at that net and scored that just that one timer. And the confidence on his face, it wasn't like he was struggling to get it or yeah, yeah. surprised to get it. He knew exactly where that was going. It was exactly when he wanted it to go. And the confidence you see in Kale McCarr now where he's not trying to establish a play, he knows what he can do. He's looking for that opportunity. And that's what separates Kale McCarr from the rest of his peers. Um, I mean, it's all for the past couple of years, it's been the conversation, Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes. Well, he's absolutely made that separation in those games against Quinn Hughes. And Kale McCarr is absolutely on fire right now. And this is his year that the league starts to really take notice more than just, oh, this is a hot name. No, this is a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Yeah. And and there's you don't know how to play him because no. he has so many moves and, and so much skill. It's it's ugh. I said the other day, like, I'm so happy Kale McCarr is on my team. Yeah. <laughs> because I would not look forward to it. Like, he's one of those. He's like a like a Connor McDavid. Like, you don't look forward to playing Connor McDavid. And I got to think. Could, he could dish that puck off and then disappear and get set up in a spot you have no idea. Like mm. he he knows how to set it up and then get himself set up. If you ever watch Kale McCarr off the puck and how he plays, it will it will pickle your brain. Yeah. He is on another level. Mm -hmm. Love the guy. Yeah. So uh, those are we could go on and on uh, on, on a few more. Even JT Confer, I think you know yeah. it, it, what he's been doing. You know, I think because the injury, people are kind of forgetting about him. But he, he's been having a great season so far. So things, th people like him. I would even throw Jason Magna in there. I'm not saying he's he is is you know game in and game game out exceptional, but he's had to play a lot for the Avs uh, with with injuries and stuff like that, and he's held his own. So uh, surprising, yeah. Not not surprising in the fact that he's tearing up the stat sheet, but he's still there. He's he, he's reliable right now. Yeah, he had a couple screw ups, especially knocking in the Kemper stuff like that's going to happen. But guys I like him, even, you look forward to that. I'd throw in a uh, Abu Kubel. Yeah, like, he he's sure. honestly like nobody gave him a shot. Like everybody kind of passed on him and. Sackick is shining him up and giving him the Nachushkin treatment. Mm -hmm. like, Even Nachushkin. Even yeah. down Nachushkin would be another one. You know, it, uh, have they lost with him? I don't you think. Know, I don't think they have. I don't think they've lost him since he's been back. I'm almost positive of that. But uh, there's so much to, to really love about what's going on with the Az right now. It's it's awesome to watch. And, you know, when you're good. And it's, it's a good thing that we can list all these players of, like, Black Friday value, and we're not mm. listing like the top three names that everybody names when you talk about the Colorado Avalanche, and that speaks to where this Avalanche team is going. Right, exactly. So, 
All right. Uh, if you guys got any, definitely throw them out. Locked on avalanche at gmail.com or hit me up on uh, Twitter or, or Instagram. Yeah. All right. So uh, <clears throat> one more read from uh, bet online and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Mr. Jared Bednar, but Thanksgiving is here. And I've been saying for a while now, about uh, supplementing some Built Bar in with your desserts. Kyle, did you have some nice desserts in, on Thanksgiving? We did. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, everybody's going to have their desserts. I don't think you know many people are going to substitute some uh, Built Bars. But if you want to start now, there, there's never a bad time to get in on that new diet that you want to pick up on. So Thanksgiving has come and gone replace some of those meals and those snacks with some built bars. They are low calorie, low carb, low fat, and high protein covered in hundred percent real chocolate. And they are a great option for when you are hungry as they have new surprises all month. And it, it is black Friday. And I've also been saying that they were going to have some black Friday deals. So check in at builtbar.com. Uh, some specials, some flavors returning, and maybe even some new flavors announced. So, uh, go to builtbar.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off of your order. Once again, that promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at builtbar.com. All right. With the win over Anaheim, Mr. Jared Bednar now moves into sole possession of first place of most wins as a Colorado Avalanche head coach. Uh, it's a pretty amazing feat from how he started to where he is now. And I, I can't emphasize that enough because, uh, you know, when he took over this team, Patrick Wad had, you know, left and there was maybe like a month left before the season started and they had to scramble to find a head coach and to be given that short of notice to find a head coach and to find the guy that is now leading your franchise in coaching wins uh, speaks to again, Joe Sackick and how he can evaluate talent, even in his coaching ranks. So I know like a lot of people, same thing with Nazem Kadri, like even within the avalanche circles, I think, you know, people love Nazem Kadri and there's people that don't like him. And that's the same thing with, with Bednar, but it goes deep with avalanche fans. Some people just do not, they, they want him out. And I don't know if that's just because, that's how a fan base treats a coach. <laughs> if you don't win a championship within like your first two years, they want you gone. Um, but I think, and I've said this so many times before, I think he is the perfect coach for this team. I love his demeanor. He's incredibly knowledgeable. He knows how to teach the game. And I always go back to that when Joe Sackett hired him saying, we want to find a teacher. And I think he hit, an, he hit a grand slam. He didn't hit a home run. He hit a grand slam with Jared Bednar. I think he's deserving of that extension. Um, and I do. And I think knowing that he he has that and this year isn't like make or break for him. I think it makes him relax a little bit, not press the issue and and really settle in and go for a long run in the uh, in the in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I love the guy. I, I, even after the two years is up, I want him to be extended for even longer than that. Yeah, uh, it, if you go back, like I'm a, I used to do articles writing about Avalanche history and their coaching. If you look at the trajectory of like Crawford, Sacco, Craw uh, Hartley, um, all of our former head coaches, they might have a good year and they hit the basement. Hmm. Bednar has climbed from the basement of the 48 <laughs> the point season, yeah. and he has kept climbing. And we, guys, we're still in the playoffs. We're still mm -hmm. making pushes, and he's he's still working with players that everybody kind of laughs at when you see them picked up on a waiver wire or at a trade, but he makes them work. Yeah. And it feels like just yesterday, he was coaching the Columbus Blue Jackets minor league team, and now he's coaching the Colorado Avalanche to a year-in, year-out threat for the Stanley Cup. Like, the man knows what he's doing, and – for him to sit sole possession of number one, um, I think the more success he has, especially with how this team's looking right now and what's to come, I think he's going to really distance himself in that number one spot. 
and things will be named after Bednar when it's all said and done. <laughs> I hope so. <clears throat> um, and they said it on the broadcast. I don't know if it was Mosier or McNabb who said it, but said, you know, to have that record for a, a franchise that's accomplished a lot. It's mm-hmm. not like they, they've been a bottom of the barrel team year in and year out. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they are in the thick of it more often than not. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's no easy feat for him to, to be where he's at. Um, yeah. And, and I think, I think the players like him. I think the majority of the fan base does, does like Jared Bednar. I think the frustration is what they're kind of, uh, you know, shouting out on social media and stuff like that. But that's, I get that part of it. The answer is not just, let's just go find a new head coach. I don't think people understand that you, you, you go get a new head coach and, and you're starting over basically. Like it takes some time to get acclimated to that style of play. It, it's, it's a whole road. I don't think the avalanche want to go down right now. No, I think they are more than happy with what he's accomplishing. They just have to get over that hump. Um, and, and there's not some, some, you know, uh, mythic mythical thing out there that is preventing them from getting the, over the second round. It's just, they haven't played well to do it. Winning the Stanley cup is the hardest thing to do in any sport, in any sport. And we always talk about the parody in the NHL and how any given day a team can win. Well, you can't say that and then turn around and be like, why can't the Avalanche just go out and win the Stanley cup? Because it's harder than to do that in any other sport. And when you make that mid-season move of firing a coach and replacing it, um, I don't know if people are thinking of the St. Louis Blues and when they made that move and then went to win the Stanley Cup, but you yeah, only make that move when the team turns on your coach and that message falls on deaf ears and they stop believing what the coach is saying. It's not so much the new coach coming in and giving this brand new look at the game of hockey that's right. been around 100 no. years. It's it's somebody they can believe in, and the Avalanche believe in Bendar more than, like, you can look at the chemistry in this team compared to every other team. We have it better than most. If you yeah. want to fire Bednar, you are going to be in a world of trouble because this team believes in Bednar, Bednar believes in them, and I don't think you can get this with any other insert name here, coach. No. And that's the thing, like, you know, a lot of people will will turn to something like that with like St. Louis and, you know, the point to the anomaly, the, the thing that it, yeah. for every one time that happens, I'll show you 10 where it doesn't. So exactly. uh, it, it's it, and you don't fire a coach when, when you have a good team. You know what I mean? They're not going to they're not going to they were never going to get rid of him in November. No. This is a, you know what I mean? This is a long season. Like if they ever got rid of him. I would think they would do Jared Bednar the the uh, the respect of doing it in the off season. You know what I mean? They're not going to just dump this guy in in the middle of the year, um, and now they're not going to do it for two more seasons after this one, which I think is more than well deserved. Uh, I hear the frustration, but it's more than just the head coach. It's more than that. Sure, he should take some of the blame. Uh, but show so should you know your your all star players. Yep. Um, but having said all that, you know, uh, like we said, from from where he started, and I like how you you worded that. Like he started at the bottom of the barrel. Yep. It wasn't like he had, was up here and then came down. He's had the, had this roller coaster. He's is ascending up pretty much every year. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's great. He's great. And like I said with Cal McCarr, I'm glad Cal McCarr's are on our team. I'm glad Jared Bednar is coaching this team too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, everybody. That will wrap it up. Um, and hopefully you are uh, home safe and sound if you did go out on your Black Friday shopping. I always look for – I don't do Black Friday shopping, but I look forward to the videos that come out of it. I can tell you <laughs> <that>. <laughs> It's just like we didn't we just 24 hours ago were we sitting around a table saying everything we were thankful for and now we're going out and getting all the things that we don't have <laughs> because why I don't I don't know short term memory I guess I yeah <laughs> I, I don't know uh, but if you did go out shopping hopefully you got what you were looking for and you're home safe and sound uh, that's gonna wrap it up Avs tonight yeah uh, back yep. to back they're doing um, Saturday is the Preds right and then. Um, tonight is uh, Dallas. It's Dallas so, tonight, then the Predators. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yes. Um, yep. So, you know, two division games The with the uh, I think everybody above them lost the other day. So the abs are now in technically a playoff spot, but now they are in the thick of it right now. And they still have those three games in hand. So things are looking up for the abs. And if you can win both of these games, I know it's a back to back and that's tough. I mean, it's all aces from here on out, man. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you again, sir. It's always appreciated. And uh, definitely go follow Kyle at Shaggy Von Doom. Um, And, yeah, we'll see everybody next week. Enjoy the weekend of games. Have a good one, sir. And we'll see you on Monday.